investment activities are, are involved with typically, financing activities, financing the business, financing the business happens through the owner financing it and through the uh, loans. So equity section and loans, and then the total cash flow, the end of the total cash flow should tie out to uh, the, the balance sheet. So cash and cash equivalents at the beginning, cash and cash equivalents at the end, 57, 790, 60, and that should be the the checking account. See, so I think it might be the the, the 64075.98 minus the the uh, credit card 900 minus the 900.95 uh, statement of cash flows. No, that's not it. Why well, see? We have a PayPal account in here that's a liability. Let's try it again. So it's the 64075.98 minus this overdrawn PayPal account minus the 62855.385770. So 57790. Okay, that's how it ties in. All right, let's see what other reports we have. We could talk about the statement of cash flows all day. So statement of owner's equity could break out more detail on uh, the balance sheet if you need more detail there, which you might, you might depending on how complex of uh, owner's equity you have. Then you've got your payables and receivables. Now remember that most of these reports are gonna give you more information about one or multiple line items on the balance sheet or the income statement. So it can be a little bit overwhelming to look at these reports, but just remember that they're just usually gonna give you just more information about the primary reports. Also just note, that the balance sheet of the income statement also through the edit layout tab gives you a lot of capacity to do comparative reports, comparing like one period to another period, uh, subtracting the two periods. You can compare quarter to quarter, current year to the prior year and that kind of stuff. So you've got the aged payables. Uh, these will give you more information about the, about the liability of accounts payable showing who you owe uh, the money too. And then you've got the aged receivables, which show you uh, who owes you money and how overdue the receivables are. Uh, income and expense by, by contact. These reports give you more information about your uh, profit and loss. And this is why in particular with the income side of things, we don't usually break out the income by who we got the, the money from. Uh, we did this time because we had gig work and it's a little bit different, but usually you don't want to have all your customers broken out on the income statement. One reason is because it'll be too long. Another reason is because you can get that information with other reports, like for example, possibly this income and expense report uh, and similar on the expense side. That's also why we'll, we'll keep it at that. So payable invoice detail that gives more information about the accounts receivable because, uh, or, or the accounts payable, the payable invoice summary, the receivable invoice detail. So these are given more information about the accounts receivable and accounts payable, accounts you would only have if you're deviating from a cash-based system uh, because of the industry that you're in. Uh, the reconciliation reports, primarily, the primary one being the bank reconciliation that we take a look at when we constructed on uh, the bank reconciliation, noting that these reports are a little bit different than the other reports in that they're internal control type of reports. And zero, the way zero puts them in here, we're kind of building these even as we do the data input as well. Uh, it's built a little bit differently than other software like QuickBooks Online. But even still, this is it's a bit different of a report because you're really uh, showing the reconciliation tying out to an external uh, place, which is the bank. Now, again, in our case, we were constructing our books from the bank, but in any case, I won't get into that in detail. 1099 reports are, are reporting reports in the United States that you would need to, to uh, track uh, for reporting purposes on who you paid money to, to like contractors, not employees, but contractors, not generally corporations, but sole proprietor contractors and small businesses foreign currency gains and losses, if applicable, general ledger detail. This report gives you kind of like the, the transaction detail report. It's the GL uh, by the activity reports, general ledger ex uh, exceptions, general ledger summary, the journal report, 
This gives you a report on like debits and credits to record the double entry accounting transactions. Could be a good report to kind of study on if you want to shore up your understanding of debits and credit. Sales tax reports can be useful, of course, when you're trying to track your sales tax, noting that sales tax is another one of those areas that kind of throw a wrench in or complicate the process of trying to build your financial statements directly from the bank feeds. Tax reconciliation, our trial balance, great report, having basically the balance sheet on top of the income statement that we've talked about uh, at the end of many of our presentations as we've constructed this. Transaction uh, account transactions, so you can look at your transaction report, duplicate statement line, inventory item details, which of course are gonna be important if you're tracking inventory in the system, inventory being one of those items that could complicate creating your books directly from the bank feeds and the sales by item reports. So there's a general outline of what we can construct or have constructed from primarily constructing our books using the bank feeds.